St. Jerome, blessed indeed is he who ponders the law of the Lord day and night. He will yield his fruit in due season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate throughout the world St. Jerome, who will be the patron saint of libraries and translators. He was born in the year 345, but is most known for converting the, um, the Hebrew Bible to Latin and giving us the Vulgate Bible that was used for centuries in the church. Great man of great linguistics and also a very learned and studied man who gave us great biblical commentaries early in the church history too. So we thank him for the gift of, of God's wisdom that allowed him to translate the Bible, but also the thirst to learn the word of God all the more. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest, St. Jerome, a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find it in the fount of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. The whole people gathered as one in the open space before the water gate. And they called upon Ezra, the scribe, to bring forth the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord prescribed for Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, therefore, Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform and had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all its people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. As the people remained in their places, Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. And the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Hush, for today is holy, and you must not be saddened. Then all the people went to eat and drink, to distribute portions, 
and to celebrate with great joy, for they understood the words that had been expounded to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appointed 72 other disciples, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever, whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today we're called to go out there and spread the good news. And we're called to do God's work in building up our church, building up our families, building up our communities, and it really is one person at a time that begins with ourselves. We have to begin with God's peace and then share that peace to the world. And we're told to go out there like lambs among wolves. So if you're not a lamb, you are a wolf, according to that type of you know, diagram, the way the, the, the scripture is written. But think of how lambs are. They're not, they're not pushover artists, but they're people that work together and they try to they stay with a the crowd. They, they want to work and follow the shepherd. They want to work along those ways. What do wolves do? They devour each other. They're actually more of a predator type of animal. And we're called to go out there and sow seeds. Every one of us. Think of the difference our world can be when you're sowing seeds of love in your family this day. Offering kind words to people that you live with or that you know or talk to on the phone, offering graciousness or hospitality to those in your neighborhood, working along others to try and make a better world. I think sometimes it's very, very easy to sit on the side chair and criticize everybody else, but you end up being the one with the short end of the stick because the 
the journey of life continues. And whenever we waste a day, we waste a day that we can never, ever reclaim. But God today sends us out two by two to do his work, to offer peace to wherever we go, to offer hospitality and receive hospitality where we go, but to build up our world and do it like a lamb, like the sacrificial lamb that lays down his life for us when we gather for the Mass. Be more like Christ. So as we begin this day, we know that Jesus is on a journey. We just heard he was resolutely determined to go to Jerusalem a couple days ago. And so today we hear a message that we're called to also go out to. Go out and spread the good news by the way we live. So today, may we sow seeds this day. Sow some seeds of peace. Sow some seeds of forgiveness. Sow some seeds of love. And be more like Christ. And as you do, the kingdom of God will be at hand. Please rise now for the intercessions. With one voice, we turn to our all-powerful and loving God with our prayers and petitions of our community. For the church and all of the leaders, for all of us as we lead in our families and communities, may God continue to guide us in our lives of discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may God grant them wisdom and courage in working for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick among us, our prayer sick list, all those in need of our prayers, may God provide healing and comfort in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful gathered here today, may the Lord make each one of us to begin a community of love around this altar table here, extending to our homes and our families, in a community of service as we're all sent off, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Nathan Hafner, who will undergo the crucible, the probably the pinnacle of United States Marine Corps training this week for basic training, that the Lord may be with him, the Fox Company, and may he be successful in it, may he be safe in it, and may he come back to us safely and strong, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way, uh, Tony's mom would be the anniversary of her death. We pray for her, Antoinette Peace Corps, that God may provide everlasting peace and rest for her soul in heaven, for her, um, for her husband, Ignatius, for her son who passed away, and uh, just good peace and, and, and fellowship among the Peace Corps family, but in a special way, um, we pray for Antoinette. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer you these prayers in love and humility, and we ask that you hear and answer them according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. With the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, for having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord God, your words were found and I consumed them. Your word became the joy and the happiness of my heart. Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.